Hi students, today we will learn about standing waves in a fixed string at both ends. Our objectives are to investigate the standing waves in musical instruments at different situations. Determine the mass per unit length sigma of a string. Illustrate the effect of reducing the length of the string on its fundamental frequency, keeping f and sigma constant. Illustrate the effect of increasing the tension force in the string on its fundamental frequency, keeping l and sigma constant. Illustrate the effect of increasing sigma of the string on its fundamental frequency, keeping f and l constant. Theoretical part Waves can either be traveling waves or standing waves. Standing waves exist either in fixed strings or open and closed tubes. Consider a taut string of length L. If a wave is incident through the string, it will be reflected from the other end. Each reflected wave gives rise to another wave traveling in the string in the opposite direction. The reflected wave adds to the incident waves according to superposition. Consider two wave trains of the same frequency, speed, and amplitude which are traveling in opposite directions along a string. Y1 is Ym sine kx minus omega t, Y2 is Ym sine kx plus omega t, where k equals 2 pi over lambda is the wave number, and omega is the angular frequency. The resultant wave function is given by Y equals 2Ym sine kx cosine omega t, The amplitude is not the same for different particles and varies with the location x of the particle. A given particle vibrates within the constraints of the envelope function 2ym sine kx. All particles vibrate with the same frequency due to the factor cosine omega t in the equation. It is clear from the figure that the position of the antinodes are lambda over 4, 3 lambda over 4, 5 lambda over 4, etc., while the position of the nodes are lambda over 2, lambda, 3 lambda over 2, and so on. Except for the nodes, all points on the string oscillate vertically with the same frequency but with different amplitude. Oscillating strings often vibrate so rapidly that the eye perceives a blur whose shape is that of the envelope of the motion. Displacement patterns of the particles of the medium produced at various times by two waves traveling in opposite directions are shown in the figure below. It is clear that energy is not transported along the string to the right or to the left, for energy cannot flow past the nodal points in the string, which are permanently at rest. Hence, the energy remains standing in the string, although it alternates between vibrational kinetic energy and elastic potential energy. For the first harmonic, the length-wavelength relationship is L equals lambda over 2. For the second, it is 2 lambda over 2. For the third, 3 lambda over 2. And for the fourth, 4 lambda over 2. Thus, we conclude that L equals N lambda over 2. The speed at which these waves move through the strings is dependent upon the properties of the medium, in this case the tightness of the string and the linear density of the strings. 
Changes in these properties would affect the natural frequency of the particular string. The vibrating portion of a particular string can be shortened by pressuring the string against one of the frets on the neck of the guitar. This modification in the length of the string would affect the wavelength of the wave and in turn the natural frequency at which the particular string vibrates at. Controlling the speed and the wavelength in this manner allows a guitarist to control the natural frequencies of the vibrating object and thus produce the intended musical sounds. The same principles can be applied to any string instrument such as a violin. The distance between adjacent nodes is lambda over 2. Thus, in a string of length L, there must be exactly an integer number n of half wavelength. Lambda equals 2L over n, where the index n refers to the nth normal mode of vibration. The natural frequencies associated with these modes are obtained from the relationship F equals V over lambda where the wave speed is the same for all frequencies. Fn equals V over lambda equals NV over 2L equals NF1. Because V equals radical F over sigma, where F is the tension in the string and sigma is its mass per unit length, we can also express the natural frequencies of a taut string as Fn equals N over 2L times radical f over sigma. Experimental part There are six strings, each having a different linear density. We will focus on these three strings. Signal generator Frequency meter Resistor U-shaped magnet From here, we can change the amplitude of the output of the signal generator. Make sure to choose sine wave. From here, we can choose a suitable range. From here, we can change the value of the frequency. Part 1. We will determine the mass per unit length sigma of the black string. Now, I will connect the circuit.
Make sure that the wire is taut by hanging a suitable mass M from the free end of the wire. Make sure that a small portion of the stretched wire passes between the poles of strong magnet without touching them. Measure the length of the wire L between the two fixed ends. Start to increase the frequency of the output signal slowly and observe the oscillating wire. Obtain the shape for the first harmonic as shown in the video. Record the frequency F as displayed on the frequency meter. Continue increasing the frequency slowly and obtain the shapes for the 2nd, 3rd, 4th and 5th harmonics and record the corresponding frequencies. Part 2. Illustrate the effect of reducing the length of the string on its fundamental frequency, keeping f and sigma constant. Reduce the length of the string, then determine the fundamental frequency experimentally. What's your conclusion? Part 3. Illustrate the effect of increasing the tension force in the string on its fundamental frequency, keeping L and sigma constant. Increase the hanging mass, then determine the fundamental frequency experimentally. Write down your conclusion. Part 4. 
illustrate the effect of increasing sigma of the string on its fundamental frequency, keeping f and l constant. Increase sigma of the string. Use the green string instead of the black. Then determine the fundamental frequency experimentally. Write down your conclusion. Plot the frequency f in hertz as an ordinate versus n as an abscissa, and determine the speed of the wave in the stretched wire. Calculate the experimental mass per unit length sigma of the string. Record the theoretical value of sigma and calculate the percentage error in sigma.